those vegan guys. Oh, thank you. Hello, I'm Paul. I'm Jason. And together we are those vegan, vegan guys. guys. We thought it might be interesting to do uh, this um, particular vlog today because um, not so long back uh, I had a debate uh, with another vegan YouTuber, GVG. Yeah, Grumpy Vegan Granddad. Yeah. Um, about uh, how we speak to and communicate with and try to influence vegetarians who are of course making some moves but not enough and uh, we find that the anyway that particular video I'm going to link up there it was a very interesting debate and uh, I highly recommend that you have a watch of it. We did it over Skype, obviously, because it's uh, during lockdown. Um, and also, uh, in that same playlist, uh, in fact, that's what I'll do. I'll link the playlist. Yeah. Um, what, what I've been doing over the last uh, couple of weeks is came up with an idea for a new series to chat to vegans around the world over Skype about their own vegan journeys. Uh, we've had some fabulous chats so far so please do check out that playlist because there's a kind of there's a leading sentence in each title um about you know yeah that comes from the vlog and uh, that will give you a hint about the person's journey anyway uh, so i've been thinking about it for quite a while because we were vegetarian for well uh 20 and 18 years respectively um, uh, when I I was vegetarian when Jason first met me at college and then when we started seeing each other you became vegetarian yeah and then we started our vegan journey uh, just six years and a few months ago so we're into our seventh year now being vegans um, and we just wanted to chat about <clears throat> about that, about the journey from vegetarian to vegan and why it's so important. Yeah, it's just kind of like we are... Paul had this great idea about the Skype chats. Uh, they've been really popular. Other I people, them. Yeah, them. other people sharing their vegan stories and their journeys. <clears throat> and we were like, you know what? Let's just sit at the kitchen table with a brew. And have a chat about and have a, Yeah, have a chat about our journey. Um, like Paul said, from vegetarian to vegan. So I'm going to tell you just very briefly about my, my own journey into vegetarianism. So it was many years ago. Many, many years ago. Over a quarter of a century ago, actually. Um, I'm there in the Oldham Art Gallery. That's where I live. Oldham. Um, I'm there in the Oldham Art Gallery and there was this, I don't even know what the um, exhibition was, mm -hmm. but there was this exhibition in the back of the Art Gallery and it was three TV screens in a room. And uh, as I recall, there was like a circle, let's say 15 feet away from each TV that kind of said stand here. So you stood in the first one, the first TV came on and it was a beautiful nature uh, compilation of snippets. Bee on a flower, fish in a stream, bird in a tree. Nice thing. Horses running in a field, really nice things. And then that screen ended and I can't recall whether you were advised whether it was vocal to move into the, the next the second yeah. circle or whether it just lit up i can't I, I can't recall i have to be honest and say that but then you stood in the second circle and the second tv screen came on and it was industrial so it showed a cotton mill and a steel mill mm -hmm. and a shipbuilding yard and and it was very metal it was all iron and steel and yeah and, industrial know, revolution time. yeah yeah it was all that kind of uh footage and then so ended moving to the third position slaughterhouse footage 
every animal starting with the the smallest if you like um which is and why i didn't get it then i don't know it showed baby chicks being ground alive in a mincing machine now that's not oh that's just what vegans said no no that's the egg industry that's the egg industry i didn't even acknowledge that at the time mm -hmm. though that that was male chicks being ground out anyway so it showed male chicks being ground alive then it showed chicken being slaughtered and then a lamb and then a pig and then a cow and that day i tried to go vegetarian i had a couple of slips with fish so i was actually pescatarian for, mm -hmm. for perhaps the first year or two but i classed myself as vegetarian and i was honestly doing it from a conscientious i do not want to hurt animals yeah but i was still hurting animals really badly because the dairy industry and the egg industry are in fact more cruel than slaughterhouses because every single male chick is ground up or gassed and killed yeah every single male chick but they need to keep the theme they need to keep them being born because they need mm. more hens to take over because they don't last long on these horrific production lines where they're free range which means they've got about this much space um I, and I never even got that from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, how was it for you, Jay? When because like when you first met me, you, you you were a meat eater. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think if I'm honest, I was thinking about this when you was kind of explaining your story about the um, the art installation because um, obviously I wasn't a part of that. That was before we met. Yes. Um, I'd like to think genuinely, if I'm honest, that even if we would have never met at college, I'd like to think optimistically that I would have found my way to veganism, if I'm honest, um, because I've always, since being a child, had a genuine love of animals and a real connection with animals. I, do, I think every human does. Yeah, well, yeah. That's what yeah, makes yeah, yeah. it, that's what makes it so, this is why vegans get so frustrated with meat eaters and um, uh, uh, vegetarians. We made a little short, little two and a half minute video that highlighted a really important point. Uh, I'm going to link that up there too. Yeah. Um, because it was Jason's idea. It was based on a, a, a little kind of meme that Jason came up with a couple of years ago. And he wanted to advance that into a, a little short film. So he put all the legwork in getting all the footage and wrote the, the main body of the script for it. I added a couple of words here and there, reformulated a sentence and I did the voiceover, but it was, it's a very important point to consider. Now, obviously we want you to watch the film, but the crux of the matter is, if you were, you say it. You yeah, say it. it's that whole thing around, um, linking it back to what we were saying about we're all inherently connected to all the animals of the planet. And if you look at how children behave around animals that innocence and that kind of connection that's instantaneous a lot of the time we sometimes forget about that as adults but in the same breath we don't because as adults if we're driving down a country road and we see an animal that's trapped and in distress maybe it's stuck in a wire fence or something like that we will reach out and we'll try and help that animal but then within the space of half an hour or an hour we might be going home to eat a leg of lamb a lamb's leg um, so really that was what we were wanting to explore is that dichotomy that yeah it's that disconnect it's because we've all been all of us um because i mean it's much like oil as soon as something becomes lucrative and people can make a lot of money from it in in, in a capitalistic world which by and large we are mm -hmm. it becomes the norm and any way to market that and make it seem like it's all okay 
In fact, there is an amazing video about food marketing. It's so good. The uh, the secrets of, of of the marketing industry. Yes. Um, and even though that's not our video, I'm gonna link it up there because it's so worth it's so worth watching. And we know that most of the people that do say. I'm going to eat vegan once a week. Do it for the right reasons because in their heart, in their hearts, in their heads, they know that animal agriculture, that the way we treat animals is wrong. And all we're asking you to do, really, <clears throat> is to extend that thought to all animals. If you wouldn't ever want to see a dog hurt, why is it okay with a lamb? Yeah. If you wouldn't want to see a cat's throat slit while it was hung upside down by its leg on a conveyor belt, <clears throat> why would you want it to happen to a pig? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, it, it all boils down to that ultimately. I mean, kind of coming back to, to my journey, my journey was inherently tied to Paul's journey mm -hmm. uh, into veganism, but... I, I demanded it. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a I'll few. Tell you that in a minute. Yeah, there was a few things that helped along the way, um, and we'll get into that briefly. Um, but I think ultimately, it's um, it's that whole thing of no matter how you look at it, it's the mass consumption of animals across the planet that is the biggest problem of all. Um, it doesn't matter how things are packaged up to look nice, to be free range, to be free, you know, um, grass fed, all of that stuff. The fact of the matter is the vast major majority of species across the planet are suffering in horrific conditions um, because of our consumption when there is no need to consume those animals and there's no need Absolutely. to destroy their lives. And let's not forget that most of the animals, um, probably 90 plus percent, are forced bred. Yeah. That it's not like they're breeding naturally and there's just a lot of them so we can use them freely for whatever we want. They're being forced bred. Uh, so, here's an uncomfortable fact about the dairy industry. The dairy industry is, of course, lots of female cows and usually only one bull. So what they do is, they use this tool. It's a bit like a flashlight for ball vines. You know what a flashlight is doing. Don't Google it. <laughs> <laughs> they manually masturbate the bull with the bovine flashlight to catch the ejaculation then they put it in some kind of big long syringe, not a needle, but still big long. They put their arm up the cow's bottom to stimulate the vagina. This is all real, this happens. Then they inject a bit of the bull jerk off juice that they've just collected. That's one way of putting it. And that's how they impregnate cows, who then carry for nine months. Same as a human. Nine months. Knowing you've got a baby in your belly. And the moment the baby is born, it may be allowed the first feed colostrum. And there, or it's born and taken away immediately and shot. And you will find a story of how that can impact even on people like veterinary nurses in the Skype sessions that I mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, check out Kylie's story. Big time, big time. Um, and so when you see the reality of the dairy and the egg industry, but you're vegetarian because you want to save animals, how can you buy into that level of cruelty and think that you're helping really in any way? Mm -hmm. You're eating less meat. Which is brilliant. It's great. It's great. It's fabulous. And we, we've always said we want to be supportive of, of all people on any part of their journey. 
but it gets frustrating when you're talking to someone who's vegetarian and has been for years and it has no intentions of going vegan but they say they're vegetarian because they don't believe in animal cruelty it's actually nonsense that's but yeah. we did it i did it for 20 years yeah, yeah, yeah. so i'm not yeah. judging you honestly i'm not judging you i'm i'm saying you you've already opened your eyes just that little bit more mm -hmm. yeah 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 just that little bit more let's and you'll see i was gonna say let's talk in in practical terms as well because you know what when all sudden done transitioning from vegetarian to vegan is predominantly for most people yeah we want to save as many animals on the planet as we can and the planet and the planet and your own health and cutting out that dairy is a big part of that um, and we can talk about that for hours on end but the practical day-to-day -day implications of switching vegetarian to vegan most people will talk about um, dairy and um, that's the big one cheese we were both absolute lovers of all of that stuff um, we, we ate a lot of it Eggman. Yeah, cheese man. Eggman, cheese man. Between six and ten a week. Um, I loved them. But I loved them. You can now successfully transition. The amount of stuff available is absolutely amazing. Absolutely. It's never, ever, ever been easier, cheaper, or more delicious mm -hmm. to be vegan. Seven years ago when we went vegan, you could buy this powdered cheese flavoured block from Holland and Barrett with fowl. So we were like, mm, just give up on cheese. And then mm -hmm. all these bits started coming out. Trickle, trickle. And then suddenly Sainsbury's had a Greek style cheese block, vegan, and we were like, mm, let's try it. Try and, it. And then we had it with a Greek style meal. It was like feta. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. It's not incredibly healthy, but neither's feta. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, now uh, Tesco do a chili and jalapeno cheddar, which is fabulous. As to do their own cheddar, Applewood smoked vegan slices, or block. Uh, I will link our vegan slices taste. In fact, I'll link the playlist of our taste tests and reviews up there because there's loads of products that, if you are considering um, making the move from vegetarian to vegan, that playlist will help you so much. Honestly, Big time, yeah. Um, as well our shopping vlogs uh, playlist um, and our recipes because we've got a great collection of recipes now like so much brilliant stuff mm -hmm. we're the kind of guys that are always whacking stuff in puff pastry just in case you don't know and just roll puff pastry sheets vegan totally <laughs> vegan get one whack stuff in it put it in the oven shove it in your face thank us afterwards <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's that you're you're absolutely right. Um, and so for people that are watching this who are already vegan, then I hope and we kind of hope that through this it reaffirms, it maybe gives you a little bit of ammo um, should you ever need it, and, and it kind of makes you kind of just clarify again in your own mind. Yeah, why you're absolutely. vegan? Why you're vegan? But also for people who are a vegetarian um, or otherwise that are watching this 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 vlog now. Um, you might be thinking the transition from vegetarian to vegan is the same as transitioning into vegetarian when you did that and it's overwhelming and there's loads of research to do and you don't know where to start and it's scary um, and there's the guilt aspect associated with it as well. Mm. You know what? That's why really it's a big part of why we do what we do with down-to-earth veganism. Yeah, just trying to show you that, as I said, with all our shopping vlogs and our recipes, how easy, quick and simple it is now to be vegan. And it's not like we found the, the journey easy at, at the start. Um, no, it was difficult. We kind of did all our shopping at Holland Barrett because we didn't know where else to shop. Mm. Now, it's, it's incredibly easy. Yeah. All the supermarkets have got their own range of products. There are so many wonderful companies who make vegan products and they're clearly marked vegan in every single supermarket. Yeah. you just got to find that section. And it, yeah, it, fe it can feel, people feel like they're, oh, but I'm going to miss out on so much. But you're also going to find so much. And you're going to feel better because what you set out to do being a vegetarian is actually now in full fruition. Yeah. You are not taking part in anything 
to do with don't forget veganism is about doing as as best you can as far as is possible as far as is practicable and possible and you'll make mistakes at the start of our journey in the first three months i had a no moo milkshake from holland and barrett um and it was made with plant milk and i was like oh you're gorgeous it, it didn't check whether it was labeled vegan drinking it thinking that's really 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 sweet i hope they're sweet in that D -d -d honey da huge mistake first month i was eating kellogg's special care uh, and it took someone in a vegan group. I was I was in a vegan group on Facebook, and I was like, "Oh, vegan journey's going so well." And this guy just really politely said, "I'm sorry, mate, your breakfast isn't vegan." And it was uh, Kellogg's Special Care. Yes. Because the vitamin D in it isn't vegan; it's from sheep's wool. So at first, it's a little bit of a minefield, and you you can't berate yourself every time you make a mistake because it's just like ah, pff, made a mistake. Okay, learn from that so that never happens again big time yeah and also at this in the same breath uh, exactly what paul's just said and picking up on it as you're transitioning don't be too hard on yourself try and manage your mental health and your emotions around it all and at the same time be prepared that the for the fact that there are some rather abrupt people within the vegan community like there is in every walk of life so if there's somebody that just kind of abruptly and, and quite nastily sort of calls you out on something we've been quite lucky a lot of the time as we were transitioning we got like paul said that nice comment before really sorry guys but just check this out you you know you need to be aware yeah but there well, are a others. lot of vegans are like that but the, there are some like in every walk of life there are people who've crawled up their own ass and died and haven't realized it and they're all like you know oh why would you want to buy that when you can make your own with 74 ingredients four of them from mongolia that you have to get a plane to buy and you're like are you for real like are you actually for real <laughs> oh don't buy things wrapped in plastic it's really bad for well you know it's usually fishing stuff that's uh, that's in the oceans not the wrap from my vivera steak oh yeah yeah we eat steak <laughs> so it is it's about doing the best you can isn't it of course it is. that's the that's the key thing and what we would recommend is that you watch some stuff there's there's a fabulous um video called dairy scary uh that you can watch on youtube free to watch um there's forks over knives speciesism dominion uh earthlings trust me when i say don't even go anywhere near earthlings if things upset you easily or dominion yeah they're both pretty harsh yeah. aren't they? the one that did it for us the the documentary that made me go vegan and come home and say we're going vegan and give all our vegetarian food away was vegetated and it's a brilliant documentary about three people in the states challenged to go vegan for six months yeah amazing and it's it's gently done and there are a couple of scenes that were tough to watch but it was so important for us to watch but it still took two viewings of that documentary for me to say right done that's it yeah done yeah vegan from this day forward and as same as what i've said in lots of conversations i've had about this over the over the last sort of six years or so um is the nail in the coffin for me um, after educated that really cemented everything for me was cowspiracy yes um, that was what's absolutely concrete cemented i am never ever going back and never will and if you are coming to uh, or even considering veganism from a health perspective then watch game changers yeah because it's all sports people or people in that kind of field isn't it and their own journeys into veganism and um some pretty incredible um studies yeah, scientifically backed, all of the research done, all of the links provided. It's absolutely smashed it out of the park it's, in terms of a vegan documentary. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's just brilliantly done. It's, done. it's done the movement a lot of good and it's helped a lot of people to make the switch from vegetarian to vegan. So yeah, I mean, if you are vegetarian, um, we do want to say well done for doing that and urge you to please go that step further now and uh, join your vegan comrades 
uh, over here. Um, it's it's more important, I would say now uh, than ever. We are in April 2020 at the moment. The world is on lockdown uh, because of a virus that jumped again from animals to humans. And this one has affected us like never before. As I said in uh, my Skype session with uh, Bev the other, other day, and it was based on a little video I saw of Earthling the Eds that kind of concreted the thought uh, concisely and beautifully. We're all locked down. We've been forced into small spaces that we can't move from. We can't see our family family and friends. We can't, we're, not, we're no longer free right now for our own safety though to do what we want to do. That gives us a little taste of what we do to animals who are constantly locked down and separated from their families and are not free to do what they want to do. Only the spaces that they're in don't have a lounge, a kitchen, a bathroom and a nice bedroom. For a pig, it's as big as she can lie down in to feed her young. She can't even stand up. She can't even stand up. And that's the pig industry. Yeah. So whether it's like, whether you're doing it for the animals, which is where we're at first and foremost, whether you're doing it for your health or whether you're doing it for the planet, switching vegetarian to vegan or straight to vegan um, from meat eater, it's going to have a massive positive impact on every aspect of your life we're not perfect vegans, not by any means. We're not the healthiest vegans by any means. Jump food vegans quite a bit. We try our best to lead by example, but in the realms of reality so that people can ease themselves into these things, try these easy recipes, see that it's cost effective and it doesn't have to be expensive. And first and foremost, you're saving animals every single day by and, doing it. And helping the planet because this, this planet now forcefully breeds billions of animals for slaughter every year. And that's a big part of why the Amazon rainforest is being chopped down for grazing land for animals. And then you feed an animal 16 pounds of grain that would feed dozens of people and you take away from it in exchange one pound of beef. So here's 16 pounds of grain and 20,000 gallons of water. Thank you for the one pound of beef. It's just not viable. Doesn't stack up, not sustainable, not with the population growth on this planet as it is at the moment. And if everything that people are projecting, we're gonna have a massive baby boom at the end of all of this. <laughs> so we're gonna have even more people being born all over this planet. Um, on a brighter note, um, we are seeing that there's a huge rise in certain parts of the world now as a result of this in, turn of, in, in terms of alternative to animals uh, and vegan products, which is amazing. Um, so let's hope that that trend continues and people get on this bandwagon and realize we can't keep consuming these all these species around the planet. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. It's true that, it's true that. So we hope that this is, has given you uh, some um, for those of you that didn't know, some information about our own journey, and for those of you that did, did already know, just uh, a, you know a bit more clarification. Um, we felt it was an important vlog uh, to make, especially now, and uh, we don't want to judge you or shout at you, um, but we want to urge you, your eyes are already open, just a little bit more, please. Can't say any more than that. Yeah. Oh, love you. Love you. <laughs> My beautiful vegan husband. Love you, our beautiful vegan and vegetarian and meat-eating friends. Please join us. Please be vegan. Do it for the animals. Do it for the planet. Do it for yourself. Just do it! Do it! Just do it! <laughs> we'll see you again very, very soon. Until then, please be excellent to yourself and each other.